I just want to say it's just a miracle that I even met you because I was talking about you the whole trip. Like I've been away since Friday and my whole goal was to go to places that you have been to. <laughs> you were the reason I actually came. So how many places have you been? So okay. Far? So I went to, um, Adafo. Adafo. Um, what was the name of the place? Um, no, 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 no. Adafo is uh, Can I remember? Oh, Safari, Aqua Saf Safari. Aqua Safari. Yes. I went there, I went to Aqua Safari, I went to Kumasi, I went to um, Ice Cafe. Ice Cafe because of you. Whoa. I'm not kidding. And I did the point and kill. <laughs> I had to do it. I had to do it. We pointed, I made them kill it. But it was awesome. Oh my God. And then I came here. But I came to Kweu to, do, to go to um, the hotel, the big hotel. Man. Rock City. Rocks, and it's because of you. I'm not kidding. This is my second time coming in here. Wow. Are you born and raised in Kowu? Yes, born and raised in Kowu. And also I'm going to die here, you know, because here <laughs> it's, it's like the feeling is so great. It's so great it's too. It's so great, I mean, the weather, are, everything. You guys are living in heaven, man. Of course. Look at, look at the view in front of us. Yeah, very beautiful. Very beautiful. Very interesting. You got all this here in Kowu. Sure. Tell me one thing that makes you proud as someone from Kowu. Okay, one thing that makes me proud is uh, here the weather, the weather itself is very unique because it's a cold weather, like people come here all the time, mm -hmm. Europeans, like people from all walks of life, they come here to, I mean, just feel the weather. And you know, here is the habit, uh, highest habitable point in Ghana. Okay. So people come here all the time to experience uh, this weather, uh, like this beautiful serene you can see, and, and you, like beautiful houses all, all over, here. over here. You know, we, we used to say that people from Kou, had the richest and it is very true <laughs> as, yeah as you came here Wanda Maya can confirm that yes people from here you can see beautiful buildings beautiful series like and and why, why is it that you guys don't show us how beautiful Yoko is sure and and that is very true like we we have a little of bloggers and vloggers do, who are do, making do videos sure do you want to do that sure sure oh, yeah. you but, know what I, I, I met this guy He's a fan of Wadamaya. I think he's over excited talking to sure, me. Sure, sure, sure. I'm going to create a YouTube channel for this guy today. Wow. <laughs> I'm blessed. <laughs> eh? See, one thing is that I'm blessed to meet Wadamaya. Like, I saw him and he was like, is this the guy I used to see all the time? Way back from China. <laughs> like, I, I, I follow you a lot. You, you I follow what? you a lot. I'm going to create a YouTube channel for you so that you'll wow. be able to tell us how beautiful Kou is. Sure. So I have a lot of audience watching us right now. I'm going to make sure you get 5,000 YouTube subscribers today. Oh God, I'm blessed. I'm blessed. Oh, no. I'm blessed, man. This is what I'm here for you. I am my yes, I believe in you. you know I trust why, in you. You know why wow. I'm here? No. They call this place Abetifi Stone Age Park. Sure. You're born and raised here. Sure. Very true. This place used to be what? A refuse dump. A refuse down. Sure. Here, so excuse me to say, we used to shed here. Like you if someone... You and who? I and my brothers, everybody. <laughs> why, yeah. Why were you doing that? Because like, we, you know, how here is, there, it was not organized. People don't visit here. And it was an, like an isolated place. People don't come here. So here is somewhere like oh. no one will disturb you. <laughs> and also like if, if you are down and you are doing that thing, like free air. Free air. Yes, oh, free air. Know. Yes, you know. So you it, know, it's very fun. It's, it's very fun. It's very fun. And you know, 10 years ago, a man who was born and raised in Abetifi here, went to Germany, come back here and decided to convert the refuse dam yes. to this beautiful Stone Age Park. Sure, down. sure, yeah. sure. I need to meet him. Don't you think so? Yeah, that's very true. I you need to meet a man. Yes. Are you gonna and that to man, him? one thing about that man is mm -hmm. he's very unique. We all know him through this town. Like, he has done a lot. And My first time I met him, I was a young boy. Okay. And I met this man and it was so fantastic. Wow. I met, I met him with one of uh, his daughters 
who is from Germany, and I was blessed to meet them. I, I you need to yes. take me there to meet the man. Sure, I, I sure. I want to speak to him. Yes, you Thank have you. to. Thank you, you have so to. much. Yes. Thank you. Let's Thank go. you so much. <laughs> this is Rama Watch. <laughs> Whoa! Wow! Finally, Maya. good yeah. to see you. Yeah, good to see you too. The whole Ghana is talking about you. Do you know that? No. <laughs> you are the well. man who converted a refuse dam into a beautiful park that everyone is coming in here to take pictures. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. My name is Wadamaya. Yeah, I'm Ben Ado, 59 years. Ben Ado, yes. How proud are you for this achievement yeah. in this country? Yeah, I should be. Because the way mosquitoes were here, the way this place was stinking, and uh, I mean, it was unbearable. It was and unbearable. Yeah. So I talked to the Abitifi chief and decided to make the place a nice park so that we can use it. We are in Kowu. Abitifi. I, I'm yeah. here once, eh? Okay, okay, that's nice. It's, it's good to be back again. Um, and you didn't come here. <laughs> no, I didn't come here because I didn't uh, know, but okay. I saw pictures on Instagram mm. and I'm like, I've been to this place, but yeah. where is this Stone Age Park? Yeah. I need to come and find out. Yeah, I still don't have it online or anywhere. It's people who have been coming here, they have been sending it online, Facebook and all that. Yeah. M Mr. Ben Ado. Yeah. Please, um, let me know. Were you born and raised in Kowu? Yes, yes. I went to school here in Abitifi. Mm -hmm. And then somewhere along the line, I went to Germany. For how long did you stay in Germany? 25 years. And what were you doing in Germany? Yeah, I was teaching art. Yeah. That yeah. tells it all because I'm yeah. looking around like artifact everywhere. Yeah. Are you an artist yourself? I am, I am, I am. I am. You're an artist? Yeah. Yes. Oh my goodness. Yeah, wood carving is my special. You, you uh, cover yeah. this I've myself. been doing everything myself. Yeah, I've been doing everything myself. Uh, yeah. Let me understand, yeah? Yeah. Your house is really beautiful. Thank you. Like, you built this after moving from Germany to Ghana? No, when I was in Germany, I was building it. So okay. it took me seven years to build. Seven? So any time I come back on holidays, mm -hmm. I work on it and Whoa. then left. So when um, 2010... I finished everything, so I moved in. Yeah. 2010. Yes. So like after 2010, you moved from yeah. all the way from Germany mm, to, to here. Yeah. Back. Yeah. So I'm 10 years now in Ghana. You're living in a paradise. Yeah. Thank you. We need to because we have such a beautiful view. That's the Afram. That is the Bruku, and we have this beautiful mountain I used to call the Pantom. Uh, it's like the one in Italy. Italy. Yes. Whoa. This place you come by all over, anywhere. I, I, I yeah. want to say that Ghanaians are so proud we of We are you. lucky. We are lucky. You, you know why I came here? No. I came here because of what? The Stone, Stone Age, Age Park. Park. But I think your story yeah. is more inspirational than even the Stone <laughs> Age Park. Let me know, what really inspired the Stone Age Park? The, the, that is okay, that big me. tree you see over there. The big tree over there? Yes, there is a cave under. And in front of the cave, Tenikes, that belonged to my mother. Whoa. So when we were children, we used to go there and farm. And these people will come with pythons. You see, when, when they come there to wheat. Pythons, snakes. Yes, pythons. snakes. And, and then they will come and stretch it in the um, cave. And so it was something which impacted my life. So all along, I was thinking of coming to do something Over there. in the cave. So when I came back, 2010 to Ghana and the um, archaeology department, um, they came here and they said there was one Thurston Shaw who came 1940 to the cave and realized that people were staying there. Hmm. But at that time, as you know, they couldn't date. But nowadays they have something they call carbon data. Mm -hmm. So they are going to date it. There I had contact with the um, head of department and um, he sent me the message that 13,000 years people were staying there. Whoa. Yes. But now I realize that it's 12,500. So, I mean, it doesn't make any difference. So, yeah. the 12,500 years ago yes. cave actually inspired you yes. to start the world, the park. Yeah. And, and also, the whole thing is, I want to um, depict the life at that time, 12,500 years mm. in the cave, you see. 
it's, it's so wonderful. Just imagine 10,500 years before Jesus Christ. Yeah. Before Jesus Christ came. And people were staying here in Abitifi. Which means that mankind started in Africa. So yes. I guess they migrated from East Africa and came uh, and yeah, stayed in here. Yeah, you know, the man came three million years ago yeah. in East, East Africa. Yeah. And anywhere you go in Europe and America, the Stone Age places they have is between 6,000 and 8,000 years. And we have 12,500 years. So it's something unique. We need to develop it and show it to the world. So it was for me like, wow, this is something you have to work on. As an art teacher, I, I, it was something on my way. So I needed to grab it. You know what I've seen it. in here? No. Is this, are you trying to depict the life in the cave? Yeah. With these images over there? Yeah. All this, they are going to the cave. You, you carved this I, I made everything myself. Anything you see here, I've been doing it barely myself. Yes. I've been doing almost everything myself. Everything? Yeah. I mean, with the blocks laying and all that, I, I let people do it. And your walls? But the walls, of course, <laughs> I didn't do it myself. Okay. But I've been um, instructing them what to, do. Yeah, what to do, how I want to have it. So all the time I was always around checking. But the figures and like anything you see, wood, here I've been doing it myself. Can I see how you make this? Is there any place that you make this or you make it just... Yeah, we can go to my workshop and have a look. Oh my goodness, yeah. let me go with you. All right. Yeah, this is my workshop. This is what I'm trying to do here. I'm trying to depict the life at that time in the cave. And from my researches, I realized that those people used to have very small head, bigger hands and bigger feet. Whoa. Because they used their hands so much and walked so much. Nowadays, we use our head too more, much. More than... Yeah, that is why my head is so big. Yeah, so we, we have to think a lot. Bigger, <laughs> bigger heads nowadays and, and smaller feet. Yeah. We're using their feet for walking too much. Yes. Their hands for doing stuff. Because, you know, I feel like when using your hands to do certain things, it will grow bigger. Yeah. You see, what is this? That is... An original um, artifact. You found this in the cave? Yeah. That is Nyamiyokuma. That is what we used to call uh, Nyamiyokuma. And they would tell us that when it rains, it comes from the skies. <laughs> yes. But our people were doing it at that time. Yeah. This is how even a white man got to know that we need to um, know how to produce knives. You know, those days our ancestors knew how to do all these things out of stones. Mm -hmm. My goodness, I feel like this is a place that every young African needs to visit. Yeah. They, were, they were also very short. Mm. I mean, you can see from the poems that we were very short. They were not that tall. That is why they are so short. So where are you going to take this thing to? I'm going to send them all to the cave, to depict the life there in the cave. How it was 12,500 years ago. Now you're making me unsure that I really want to see the cave. Can you take me there? Yes. So come with me. Okay. Maya, before I show you the cave, mm -hmm. I want to show you this. Okay. This, um, this thing is... Uh, all the water which comes from the kitchen passes through the stones here mm -hmm. and then through the charcoal what and then cool? goes down to become waterfalls. You created your own waterfall in here? Yes, we try to recycle all the things, I mean water and everything we can to make use of it because we don't have enough water here. And is this the restaurant? This is the restaurant. And, and all that you see, I made them myself, by my own hands. How? I, I mean, that is how I don't have the money, so I have to do it. You don't have the money, <laughs> but you're genius. Yeah, and so I try to use my energy, my strength. And, and as an artist, I try to do everything myself. So okay. I was sampering, doing, arranging, 
put in everything by myself. Is this where they acted the movie The Lion King? Kind of. <laughs> <laughs> I would oh, say kind of. Oh, were you here? <laughs> that high? Oh. I wish. But it, all these stones were here? It, no. I, I would say no because this is where the whole Christian quarters were throwing their rubbish. So here was a refuse dump. Where we are standing, it was like about a meter ahead, um, high. Ooh. I had to use the 10 wheeler track to clear everything and it went through uh, 22 times before they could take away all the rubbish from here. All these rocks you couldn't see. I, I could trace the um, rocks from behind there. So I knew that the rocks were here. Were here. But I didn't know actually what was down here. So this is our viewing point. Mm -hmm. From here, you can see almost part uh, of the park, the whole park, including the waterfalls. There, you can have a look. L let me understand something. Yeah. This was what trying to like the, trace back the Stone Age. Yes. The park was not there. No, no. The idea was that um, actually the whole place had been sold already to people. Okay. So when I got the report from the archaeology department that it was 13,000 years, I went to the chief, Abitifi chief, and talked to him about it, that now this is what is happening and it's something unique which doesn't exist anywhere. So we need to develop it and I'm capable of doing that. So before I do that, I invest my energy and money inside. He has to give me the whole land here. He has to retrieve it from the people, people. to give me back because um, it's a valley where we have the cave. If um, we leave the people there, to build their houses, then in future they are going to throw their refuse in the, uh, in the cave. cave and also their uh, water from the bathrooms and all that, they are going to let it come yeah. down there. So he should reclaim the whole land for me so that I develop it into a park so that when people come, they go to the cave, they have a place to rest, to have something to drink and that to is have the fun. idea that you had for the park. For the park. So how many acres have you claimed so far? So far it's about um, six acres. Six, six acres, acres, yeah. But the entire project that you want to build is how many acres? It's um, 52. 52. 52, yes. You've developed but I'm, six acres now? Yeah. I'm not going to, I, I want to leave most of it natural, to be a natural forest. Yeah. Wow. The idea, what I'm trying even to um, speak with the chief and the stakeholders is that, you see, um, every year people are putting bushfires mm. in the forest. So they are spoiling the whole forest. Yes. My forest, which I preserved for the past 35 years, now everything is gone because the farmers, they put fire in it. Oh, the hunters, they put fire in it. So almost every year there is bushfire. So I'm trying to convince the chief and the people to give me the whole valley so that we do it as a forest reserve so that we can maintain the nature, the nature that we don't spoil it. Your waterfall yeah. looks beautiful. So that is what I'm trying to do. Wow. Yeah. I mean, this is impressive. Yeah. So from, from here, that's when we walk to the cave, yeah? Yes. So you want to take me to the cave? Yes, okay. I want to take you to the cave. I forgot to also show you, mm -hmm. this is the, the uh, writings on the wall. wall that is a beautiful Stone Age Park. I did everything by myself. And I used broken bottles to, to write. Oh. The green you see is broken bottles. I got them from um, Ghana Guinness. You know what? I, I thought it's just painting. No, oh no, it's, it's, it's broken bottles. Man, I just want to so, tell you. So the color is not going to fade and you don't need to do anything on it. And when the sun shines, it reflects and it's, it looks always beautiful. The space I've left, left of the uh, writings yeah. is um, if I have support from people, people 
then I'm going to write your names over there. there. Yes. You, so that you, you don't you don't have to you don't stop talking. Stop talking. I <laughs> like I, I, I don't even know what to say right now, knowing that everything in here was done by you. You invested yeah. your own money to do whatever you're doing in here. I think I have a team of people that can support you. Do you want us to support you? Please, please. We need to fence the whole area so that if um, over the Easter, for instance, we can let Shatawale, Stone Boy, Boy Stone Boy in Stone Park, <laughs> we can have Sarkodie and all From these them. people here. And the place is so big that we can contain 3,000 people and it wouldn't affect us. You know what I want to do to help you? I'm going to start a crowdfunding for you. Um, each and everyone watching this video, it's your favorite village boy, Mr. Ghana Baby. And I'm here at the Stone Age Park here in Abetifi, Kowu to be precise. You know what? What this man has done is beyond me. This is impressive. Like, I never knew that this is what I'm going to expect. So what I'm going to do today is that I'm going to create a, crowd, a GoFundMe page. Please, it's going to be transparent. Donate and let's give it to this man to continue his vision. You need to achieve it before anything. You know what? Do me a favor, a dollar is enough. I have over 500,000 people. If each and every one of you can donate a dollar, I think we can give me $500,000. That would, that be, would be wonderful. <laughs> that would be wonderful. Who will do that? Yeah. Take me to the cave and yeah. uh, we're going to So from there. come with me. Thank you. So, um, Maya, that is, that is the tree, the tree I was talking about. And it's rock. standing direct on top. On top of a rock. That's the cave, eh? Yes. And as it is, it's, it's not easy to uh, cut the tree. Yeah. That is why it's still standing, else it might have gone already. I'm telling <laughs> people already. that if you want to see God, you have to come to Africa. They don't understand. Like, yeah. this is a whole tree growing on a rock. Yeah. And you still believe, think that God has God exists? God lives in Africa. Yeah. Whoa. This is a so, beautiful cave. This is the cave. How does it feel when you come in here? Do, do you still get Always, your childhood memories back? Yes, and I also see how the people are sitting and um, doing their own things. So all the figures, I took measurements from here. So I know I have special places where they are going to be, be. all the 17 figures. This place is going to be their uh, sleeping uh, room, like a bed. There, the other side too. And this is where they are going to um, make their fire, like the kitchen. And there is also a place here um, where they, uh, when, when it rains, then you have like a stream, a spring. Yeah. Uh -huh. So there, there is one girl in the statues who will be looking into the mirror. So you'll be using that as a mirror. Wow. Yeah, to... And are you going to cover this? Are you going to cover it? Are they going to be in there? Yeah, I'm, I have these pillars. I'm going to put a rope through so that people will not cross to uh, touch the figures. I'm going to have uh, bones and uh, all the rubbish as we have in our houses, houses. that we, we throw things around us. So I'm going to throw bones I think these people were so smart living in here because even the view in here yeah. is heavenly you know yeah. they, didn't, they didn't know anything about beer those days they no. have sat in here and enjoyed beer themselves <laughs> I, 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 I think I, so I whoa. think so I think so you know they, they needed places like this where it was not too deep and not too dark because they couldn't light the places so they needed a shed where when it rains, they will, they will not be wet. Mm -hmm. And also, they can see afar. So that was a perfect place for them. And beautiful. can you imagine, when I was a child, this place used to be a canopy. You can't see anything. You couldn't see anything. So down was all thick. And there were big snails and, and snakes and all what not. There and now... There animals in there before. Excuse me. There's no wild animal. Um, nowadays, not because of the uh, fire. But here, there is a picture in uh, Kubase Palace. There, when the British came, they killed a leopard mm. here. So they made a picture with a leopard 
here. Yeah. Yes. So there were um, animals, big animals. Mm. So if we are able to preserve this forest, then we can also have such animals here. And nowadays it's easy to do that. You just need a drone, for instance, and you can be patrolling the whole area and nobody will go inside. Wow. So it's very um, easy to do that. Like I said, your vision is big. Yeah. And each and everyone watching this video, please, I'm going to create like a GoFundMe page for him. Make sure you donate a dollar. 500,000 people. Let's each and every one of you give him a dollar. It's going to be transparent. I'm going to show you guys that this is how much you guys are donating. And I'm going to hand over the whole money to him. And you all are going to see what I'm talking about. Because I feel like six years, he has been able to achieve it together. I think you can do better. By all means. By all means. There are so many Africans watching us right now. What message do you have for Africans watching us? Yeah, I will tell my fellow um, diasporans to come back home and help build Ghana. We have so many opportunities here and um, they all need somebody to help manage things. Since I'm here, I've employed so many people. Oh. Yes. Who, because of my talent, I'm also trying to manage and people are having work to do. So I would advise everybody to come back home and try and do something. Start, at least start, start something here. And not that everybody goes to Accra in the capitals, <laughs> but also go to the villages. Yeah, you yeah. are living in the village yes. now. And you're living your best life because your house alone is somebody's five-bedroom apartment yeah. in the UK. <laughs> this, is, this is where you can have space, you can make noise, you can do everything. With my work, I most of the time have to use chainsaw. Hmm. All these wooden things, I need to use chainsaws. So these chainsaws, they make noise, and I can't do that in Accra. Yeah. So I was so happy to come from Abitifi to do something like this. I just want to say thank you so much for sharing your story with me. Yeah. And um, from today, a lot of people are going to come. So get ready. They're going to drive all the way from Accra, Kumasi, Takradi to come and say what the man who wants to what, bring the Stone Age back to 21st century has done here in Abetifi. Thank you so yeah. much for talking to me.